to the Refugees in a New Land podcast from the Times News and MagicValley.com. We're following a refugee family from the Democratic Republic of the Congo as they move to Twin Falls and start a new life. Here's Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins. This reporting project could be incredible or it could be a dud. And it all depends on trust. Three weeks after Connie Gamba Malabwe and Beatrice Bahati arrived at the Twin Falls Airport with her two children, Sarah and Daniel, the couple still hadn't really opened up to our reporting and photography team. They were always polite and patient about answering questions, but still formal. To tell their story right, we needed their trust, not just their tolerance. One aspect of our project is the series of video stories that photographer Stephen Reese is filming. So reporter Titona Dunlap made arrangements for the two of them to visit the family's apartment on the evening of December 8. Here's Stephen. Beatrice and the two children were home, and Kanagamba showed up after a day of appointments at the refugee center. I could tell he was tired and didn't look interested in being interviewed or filmed, which was fine, and I told him that. Soon he relaxed and agreed to be interviewed, and he had a lot to say about his experiences in the refugee camp and about his feelings at the time. He saw things back home in the Democratic Republic of Congo that no one should have to see, people being killed, which at first he didn't want to talk about. But once he did, he started to share more. Nobody had really asked him to tell his story in that way before. When it came time for me to shoot footage, Beatrice was cooking while Kanagamba took care of the kids. I shot video of them eating and Kanagamba putting Daniel to bed. I was trying to capture everyday situations to show these four as a family the same as any family in America. I told Kanagamba that in America, both men and women contribute to household chores like cooking and cleaning. He said that back home, if the man helped with the cooking, his friends would joke that his wife had put a spell on him. But when I told Beatrice that American men help out in the house, she smiled. I think she found it funny. By mid-December, we had enough compelling reporting and photography in hand to shape the first installment of our project. But the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center was about to close for two weeks for the holidays, and our team needed to get a lot better at capturing life that happens outside of the refugee center. On December 29, Titona, Stephen, and interpreter Mary Lupumba were the first visitors in two days at Malaboy and Bahati's apartment. The couple seemed kind of bored. When our team showed up, Malaboy and Bahati were just sitting listening to country music radio. Bahati sat on the living room floor using a phone that was charging in the wall outlet. The TV was off because the family was sick of watching The Lion King and The Jungle Book over and over. In that interview, Titona learned that Malabwe chats on Facebook with friends back home in Africa. What does he chat with them about? Just like, what life is like here? So most of these greetings, asking each other how things are going, mm-hmm. how's life back home, and mm-hmm. the other people asking how life is here, that's basically what they talk about. What does he tell people from back home how life is here? So mostly what he tells them is that there's a big difference between back home and here. Mm-hmm. What is that big difference? <laughs> so his biggest problem is you can't visit people here. Every, every, everyone is in back home. Yeah. No one's out. Yeah. Like back home, you don't really have to make a, your visit known. You mm. can just go and visit someone. And mm. After a few minutes, Titona's conversation turned to Lupumba. So do a lot of refugees have, like, use social media, have Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that? Most of them. But maybe the... People like mom and dad. <laughs> but with, with people my age, I think all of them have social media. Yeah. I notice a lot of people have phones in their 
Because right. I think when they arrived, like me when I arrived here, the first thing was to get a phone because I, I really had to go back home with my friends. Mm -hmm. So so I think it's the same with everyone when they come, they want to get a phone and be able to go back home. Mm -hmm. So that if there's any family members that remain back home, you can tell them that we are right safely. Mm -hmm. okay. While they talked, the country music kept playing. So when they listen to the radio, do they like this kind of music? <laughs> so he just listens to it, just for entertainment, but then he doesn't even understand what's being sung. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What kind of music does he like? He needs to scan you from the So he loves music that he can understand. Eventually, Titona got an answer to her question about musical genres, too. So, African music mostly is R&B, oh, and this is what they call rumba. I don't know how I can explain it, but it's more like it has more rhythm than these other types, so you can dance to it easily. If Malabwe and Bahati were bored that week, there was a good reason. They haven't been walking around Twin Falls at all, Tituna learned. They're afraid of the cold, and they don't let the children play in the snow. So really, they're stuck inside all day because it's so cold. <laughs> But you don't mind the cold, do you? I do. You do? I'm mostly at home. <laughs> Unless someone picks me up or something. Mm -hmm. That day really paid off for us in a way we didn't expect. We got the old family photos I'd hoped for, and, I think, the trust they represented. Titona told me about her breakthrough when she got back to the office. Well, I found out that Connie Gamba and Beatrice do have photos. I asked um, Mary to ask them last week if they had any photos of them in the refugee camp, any wedding photos, any photos of their kids. And at first she told me no, but today I just spent about an hour or two hours with them and he was like, so you wanted photos, right? And I was like, yes. He's like, what are you looking for? And I told him anything, anything of back home because I can't picture what it was like. And he told me, well, wait here, I'll go look and see what I have. And then he came back out and he had like a stack of maybe 40 photos, not not in an album. And they're kind of like crinkled. You could tell that the kids have been playing with them because as soon as Sarah saw the photos, she like started grabbing them and like showing me people, like she was pointing out people to me and saying names. What time of life are these from? Like long um, ago, recently? Um, there were a couple of pictures that were before they got married. Like, there's a picture of Connie Gamba when he got baptized. And Beatrice told me that they dated for about a year before they got married. So there's a couple of photos of them before they had children. And can, then, can we borrow some? Um, I didn't ask to borrow them, but uh, we did take pictures of them. Uh, Steven was there. He took pictures on his camera, and I took pictures on my cell phone. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Here's my favorite moment from that scene. Who is that in this picture? Sarah. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Who's this? This is at the airport. He came from escorting a friend of his that was going to nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he decided to get a photo Looking sharp? It's looking sharp. <laughs> and he was fat. <laughs> <laughs> On January 6, another member of our project team, photographer Drew Nash, was at the CSI Refugee Center for one of Mulabwe's English as a Second Language classes. Hey Drew, can you take two minutes, come over and tell me about this morning? 
Yeah. Um, we actually had some nice stuff. They donated a sewing machine. I didn't know that Kanigama had been a, a tailor for eight years. Who donated a sewing machine? I don't know. We don't know who donated it, but he's got a sewing machine now. So I got him. It was him. given through the center. Yeah. Okay. So I got that photo, and then I got awesome. a photo of him like saying I'm here, like you know, doing role like attendance. So I got a hit in the kind of, ESL class. In the ESL okay. class, yeah. Um, and that, for the most part, that's that's the two main images. I also got a really nice photo of him. It's kind of environmental. Oh, it's it, it got the American flag right behind him, and he kind of felt it fills the, the frame, so it looks kind of nice. You know, it's okay. kind of During an artistic. Uh, no, that was no. actually when he was on his way to go talk to the woman that was going to present him with the sewing machine. So he was like, yeah. So, so it was, did they, they make a big, big deal of the sewing machine thing? No, they didn't. It was no, just they, a low key. They, yeah, it was just kind of like, hey, when Cunningham gets here, tell him that he, that Teresa needs to talk to him. So he got into class, and then the teacher of the class said, you need to go speak to Teresa. Like it's at the principal's office, is what it felt like. And then he go, you know, so he finds Teresa, and I'm like, hey, is it cool if I come in? She's like, fine. And uh, sorry, she's who's like, Teresa? Um, she works at the a see, center the, the employee. Center. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah. Anyways, so she goes, yeah, here's a sewing machine. She already had it all set up. She goes, I tested it out. It seems to all work. And she and he jumped, sat in there, and he like he, he definitely How did he knew react? his stuff. He yeah, he's not a very reactionary person but he, he was happy and he, he sat down and he, he sewed some fabric and he tested it out and everything and I got some photos of that and yeah I mean he didn't really know his stuff it wasn't like he's you know so and he's definitely a tailor this part about a tailor that's new to me where have you done that well this was the thing oh the other photo I made is um, he, uh, he, he the, the guy that's in charge of the employment is filling out a, a job application for him at Cactus Pete's and so I overheard the conversation, and I made a photo, but I overheard the conversation. The guy was like, so how many years were you a tailor in the Congo or whatever? And, and, he, and it was eight years, and I was like, oh, my God, he was a tailor. But I'm like, so, okay, eight years, he was a tailor. And then right after that is when he gets given a sewing machine. I'm like, oh, well, this all makes sense now. And he's also requested, so Connie Gubba had requested the center. He goes, I could really use a sewing machine, apparently. I don't know when this happened, but that conversation took place at some point. And they literally said it was like two days later that someone donated a sewing machine. It was like just kismet. And the next so day, we had another success to celebrate. Titona got permission for her and Stephen to be in the room during Bahati's um, ultrasound and doctor's appointment. I know it was a scramble to get permission. How did that happen? Um, well, I found out yesterday she was going to have an ultrasound today, so I knew I had to get permission. Um, from her because I you know haven't gotten that permission yet I wasn't sure when her next doctor appointment was so I had to um, communicate through Mary and then Mary asked Beatrice and she said that was fine and then we had to go through the hospital and um, tell their PR person Michelle that you know uh, Beatrice says it's okay and that she had to interpret through Mary and then um, this morning we had to sign papers so it was like a a long process, but Michelle helped me out and she was understanding. Usually I don't try to be that last minute, but I think because I worked with her in the past and usually I'm not last minute, I think she understood. She understood yeah. that you were dealing with something unusual yeah. here. And Interpreter Mary Lapumba was there at the ultrasound too, so the room was full. Right. Hey, go ahead and lift up your shirt. Is this your first ultrasound for this pregnancy? Uh, you 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 that's what I think, yeah. <coughs> okay. It's gel warm. Does she know if it's a boy or a girl? I saw Michelle with a little more No. Okay. No? No. Does she want to know? I don't want to know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. The baby's head is right here. 
the heartbeat right there. Some good on interprets for other refugees when they visit the doctor, too, she told Titona later. And she doesn't like hearing the heartbreaking stories they tell their doctors. But Bahati's appointment that day didn't have any hard stories or bad news. Any problems at all? Where's her pain in her chest or her back? Her back and her chest. Okay. Is she short of breath at all? Okay. Okay, we'll check that. Has the baby been active? Okay. We like that. There should be an active grid every day. <coughs> and uh, the baby should have 10 kicks in two hours at least once a day. Does she have any labor pains? Okay. If she gets contractions every five minutes from an hour, she needs to come in. In our next episode, Malabwe and Bahati start experiencing more of their new city, Library story time, a bowling alley, a shopping trip to Walmart. And what says Twin Falls more than a reptile show and tell at the Herod Center? Refugees in a New Land is produced by the Times News in Twin Falls, Idaho, with Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins, reporters Titona Dunlap and Julie Wooten, photographers Drew Nash and Stephen Reese, and digital editor Kyle Hansen. Music by Chris Zabriskie. Find more about this project and complete coverage of South Central Idaho's news at magicvalley.com.